Dublin beat me the 120 to 19 points at Parnell Park tonight in Division 1 of the National Football League. The big thing that stood out was the fact that Mead didn't roll over, having conceded a goal early on in the game. And considering the recent history between these two teams, you'd think that maybe it's going to spell trouble for Andy McEntee's side, but they didn't. And after going, I think it was 1-4 to a point behind, and later on, seven points behind, they brought the game back to, to a point on a couple of occasions, which... Considering, like I said, the history, that was very good going. And not only that, it was the, the way that they played, the uh, the amount of turnovers that they won in the game, more and more as the game went on. They were actually making Dublin fumble possession in uh, in attacking parts of the field. It's just something we're not really used to, to seeing. And you kind of wonder, are there reasons to explain away the fact that, that Dublin didn't win this game as convincingly as we're used to? So, I mean, a couple of things are... Is it something to do with the fact that there's no crowd here at Parnell Park tonight? Because early on when that goal went in, mistake from the goalkeeper, Dean Rock knocks it into the net. You'd be thinking, right, the crowd will get on Mead's backs or, you know, the dander would be up for the home team and Mead might get destroyed. I mean, that is something we've seen plenty of times in the past to many, many teams outside of Mead, of course. Uh, even in All-Ireland Finals, sure, Tyrone were, were, uh, were under the cash for an awful long, uh, a lot of that game. But they just kept coming back. So is it the smaller venue? Is it winter football? The fact that maybe you wouldn't put up as big a score on a team. But then at the flip side, 120 is a big score to put up. So Dublin conceding 19 points is the thing that stands out there. Maybe Dublin have lost something of their aura. I mean, the Jim mcconnelly has gone. Obviously, he wasn't starting. Bernard Brogan wasn't a starter really as much in the last couple of years. The panel isn't quite as deep. Jack McCaffrey being gone is the one that stands out more than anything. So that will be a concern for <clears throat> Desi Farley said the nightmare start for that any intercounty manager could have, which is basically trying to live up to a drive for five team. Uh, how do you build on that sort of history and keep the players motivated? Obviously, he's refreshed it because he's got plenty of young lads in there, but he's had that. Then he's had seven and a half months off. He's obviously had to watch the club championships and he'll, he'll judge a fair bit from that. The likes of Robbie McDade, who's been a very good club player for Valley Bowden the last couple of years. He got his chance, did some good stuff out there tonight, especially in the first half. Um, but also the some of the things that would concern Desi outside of the performances, Johnny Cooper was taken off in, dis, in considerable discomfort, discomfort after 46 minutes. Keno Sullivan only came on in the second half. He was uh, definitely seemed to have some sort of a leg issue towards the end of the game. I mean, Dublin lost three league games and still won the All Ireland in 2019. They didn't win the league title, um. So it's it's hard to know fully how much to read into this, but there's definitely a lot of green shoots for, for this t- for, for me. I mean, actually, just once more about Dublin. James McCarthy will come back in. Owen Merchant came on. He might start. Uh, Paul Mannion is to come back into this team. So they they've plenty of other things that they can look at and think we can build on that. But yeah, for me. Um, if they hadn't gifted away that goal early on in the game, who would have known? Maybe they, who knows? Maybe they could have won this game. Maybe if they didn't have so many wides. I think midway or in late on in the second half, it was eight wides to four when Meath were only a point behind, and they didn't give up. That is the big thing here: the fact that they didn't give up, and that's something that they would have been very displeased with in the past. It kind of feels maybe it's a bit premature saying it, but it feels like maybe the the gap between these teams, which was pretty big last year, we saw Dublin. You know, pacing them in the Leinster final, and Mead only put up four points. They had four points by the 18th minute here, so they're obviously, you know, bridging the gap somewhat. Just two scorers from play in that attacking forward line. A couple of lads did come on, James Conlon and Jordan Morris. They did add a couple of points from play in the attack line. But Killian O'Sullivan really good. Thomas O'Reilly hit some great frees, and he didn't score from play. But this is a guy who a couple of years ago in a qualifier in Port Leash against Clare, if I remember correctly, he was brought on and actually taken back off again because it just wasn't going his way. But he he does look like a bit of a talent. Uh, Shane Wall scored four points from play. Lots of lots of good shoots for Dublin. Kieran Kilkenny always dangerous with scores. Conor Callan got four. Uh, Dean Rock scored one eight. Brilliant night for him. He becomes Dublin's uh, all time leading scorer. Stephen Cluxton. The longest ever career now with, as a Dublin footballer as well. Paddy Small looked good at times as well. So <clears throat> even though Dublin will probably be concerned about certain aspects, how much do you read into their first competitive game in seven and a half months? How much do we read into me per- performing as well as they have tonight? You'd have to certainly give them some sort of credit. The way the draw is panning out, these teams could meet in the Leinster final. And if they do, you would feel like Mead could go in there certainly having more confidence than they would have had last year when they 
probably didn't have performances like this to tell them that yeah you can you can challenge Dublin but in Croke Park that could be different um, so we'll see how it goes I mean they're still winless no points after six games of the league for me so I don't know it's, it's hard to know 170 minute performance changes everything but even so good performance and uh, good football to watch